Mark Easton there. And Mark uh, referred to two constituencies in that report. Fermanagh and South Tyrone was first, and East Belfast. You may want to see a full list of the candidates in those two places. Here they are on your screen. Right, you've heard from the election out there. Now to the debate in here. The five main parties are represented behind me. We'll discuss their values, their approach to austerity, and we'll talk Westminster tactics in the event of a hung parliament. But to start, we've asked them each to prepare a 30-second statement, just a few sentences that give us the equivalent of their political mission statement. So, gentlemen, uh, let us go. We're going to run right round from left to right. That means it is the turn of Nigel Dodds from the DUP to start. Nigel, go ahead. Everyone knows that in the next parliament, the DUP can play a powerful and pivotal role. More votes for the DUP, more seats for the DUP means more influence for Northern Ireland. And we will always stand up for Northern Ireland, but we'll also stand up for the United Kingdom as a whole. We want to grow our economy. We want to enhance our British identity. And only a strong united team of DUP MPs will have the strength in numbers and the powerful voice to deliver that for Northern Ireland. Nigel, that was to the second perfect. Thank you very much uh, indeed. OK, moving round one. Marcin Omulio, Sinn Féin. Marcin, go ahead. I'm standing in this election on the platform I had as Lord Mayor of the great city of Belfast. I want to build the peace. I want to foster reconciliation. I want to emphasise the common ground because that which unites us is always greater than that which divides us. And as an entrepreneur and someone who's created jobs across Belfast over 20 years, I want to bring jobs and investment to Belfast to put our young people to work. Marcin, thank you very much. We move round. Next, it's Mark Durkin from the SDLP. Mark. When you elect SDLP MPs, you won't get a party who will be bought on one issue only to stay bought on another issue. We use our position in Parliament to voice your concerns, your case, your care, whether you're people who are worried about the quality of public services and budget cuts, whether you're worried about the injustice of ongoing public uh, pay restraint, whether you are concerned about the wider causes of international justice and human rights, the SDLP will be your voice in the next Parliament, as we have been up until now. Mark, thank you. Moving round, the Alliance Party, David Ford. David. Alliance is different from the other four parties. Each of them seeks only to represent one section of the community. Alliance's principal aim is to build a united community in Northern Ireland. We need to grow our economy, that's absolutely clear. But we won't do that if we don't build a united community alongside the economy. We simply cannot be successful if we do that. So we need MPs who will engage constructively at Westminster, not just seeking the begging bowl, but in order to ensure that we get the necessary reforms in place to make Northern Ireland society better. Thank you very much, David. Finally, Mike Nesbitt from the UUP. Mike. A good result for the United Kingdom would be a stable union in the face of separatists, not least in Scotland. A good result for Northern Ireland would be to move off our dependency, uh, particularly on the block grant or subvention, and start generating serious wealth for all our people. We have argued since before the last general election the key policy lever is corporation tax. A rate of 12.5% here could generate 35 to 40,000 new jobs here, transformational just, not just for those people, but for this country. Mike, thank you very much. Thank you all. OK, let us have a more general discussion now we've had the opening statement. And we thought we might start in the short time we have talking about your values, your social values, the great division between more liberal area of society and the more conservative. You might have seen that Nick Clegg today warned of something he called Blue Kip, a right-wing alliance of UKIP, Tory and the DUP, he said. I'm looking at you, Nigel. He said it would reject gay rights and support the death penalty. What was your reaction? Well, on that? I was very grateful for Nick Clegg reminding people, of course, of the pivotal role that the DUP can play because uh, we actually, when you look at that debate that held, was held earlier, Northern Ireland's voice was excluded, and yet the DUP has more MPs than most of the parties that were on that stage and will have after the election. And we can play a very pivotal role in the election. But I think it's wrong for Nick Clegg. I mean, this is a man who talks before the election one thing, and even he forgets what he stands for and says after the election. That was proved the last time. But, but will you reject gay rights? Will you support the death penalty? Was he right in saying you have very socially conservative values? Well, 
we reflect uh, the view of many people in Northern Ireland across the two communities in Northern Ireland. A lot of these issues are shared across the two communities, and these are devolved matters. These are matters for Northern Ireland to decide on a cross-community basis. But in terms of our position in Parliament, we are not in the pocket uniquely compared to the SDLP, for instance, with Labour, Plaid and SNP. On your values, yes. not on your position, yeah. your, your general, on your values, is he right to say you would reject gay rights and you would support the death penalty? Well, those matters are matters for the devolved assembly in, in Northern Ireland, but they're not matters for the Westminster Parliament, and they're not matters, in any case, they're for a free vote in sure, the Westminster Parliament. Sure, MPs voted on gay marriage for England and Wales, I think. They voted against gay marriage for England and Wales in the votes in the last parliament, didn't they? Yeah, and in, the, in Northern right. Ireland, so they in have the Northern taken Ireland Assembly, on it. Our, our MLAs voted against right. it, as right. did other unionist MLAs, as did some nationalist MLAs as well. No, so this is a cross-community well, issue. I'd like to hear that. The UUP, Mike. All these matters, whether it's abortion, the death penalty, same-sex marriage, these are what we consider to be matters of conscience, and each member is free to vote uh, according to their, to their own conscience. And how would you say in your party opinion divides? Well, it depends on the particular issue. Which, which one do you want to, to pick up? OK, we'll take gay, to same-sex same marriage. Same-sex marriage, I would have thought the majority would be against, but you know, that is a particular issue with, with regard to what they believe marriage to be in terms of a religious sacrament, but nobody that, that I would tolerate in my party would be against uh, people practising their own beliefs in terms of if, if they want to have, live in a same-sex relationship, that's fine by me. Well, I, I think that Sinn Féin believes in equality. We believe in equal rights for our, <coughs> our gay and lesbian uh, brothers and sisters. But our other values are we put communities first, we put people first. And therefore, we're going to strive to protect the health service that we have. We spend £4.5 billion pound from Stormont on health, and we have to defend our health system. We have to defend education. We have to make sure that we roll, roll back but, this historically. What proportion London? of your party would be, say, on the side of same-sex marriage, and what proportion would well, be against it? For, for marriage equality, 100%. 100%? Uh, 100%. Right. And, and our values are our values of compassion. There are values of care for people. There are values of looking after those who, who are at the bottom of the economic ladder, making sure we look after the vulnerable, as well as building a fair economy for all. And how, what about the SDLP, Mark? Well, we voted for the equality uh, legislation in uh, Westminster. Even though it was England and Wales, we didn't pretend, oh, because it's not Northern Ireland, we can opt out. Uh, we've never been found wanting when it comes to the fundamental principles of equality uh, and human rights, and that comes in respect of gay rights uh, as well. We've also voted very solidly more widely on issues of civil liberties as well when it's come to counter-terrorism legislation, which we regard uh, as counterproductive. That's a consistent uh, position that we reflect. We know not all our constituents uh, appreciate or agree with us on that, but we do not hide where we stand, and that's the leadership we give. So it doesn't sound like there's a perfect fissure down the unionist... Uh, nationalist lines on this area no, of no, social no, 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 it doesn't sound there yeah. is, but, but, but it does sound like there's a kind of a weight on the unionist side that would be more conservative. Would that be right or...? Well, I think, well, you, yeah, can, you, can issue, yeah. well, well, you can take a different issue. Well, go on, David, because you're You can take a different issue. I mean, yeah. I, I have today, as Minister of Justice, published a response to a consultation on very limited changes on abortion. It seems to me, from my engagement in some of the other parties, that it's likely that Sinn Féin will significantly favour probably want to go further than our limited proposals. SDLP seems to be completely against. Ulster Unionists and Alliance will be having a free vote with potentially a majority in favour of modest change. DUP may or may not have a free vote, but probably a majority slightly against. So it's, it's a bit more complex than you've been presenting it. There, is a, there is, has been this case of Asher's Bakery. Well, I'm looking at you, Nigel. It was a bakery that refused. It didn't want to put a pro-gay marriage slogan on a cake. It's went through the courts. I don't think it's been resolved yet. And I think you want a kind of conscience clause passed yeah. in the Assembly, what don't what you? What we're reflecting, and again, this is an issue that's shared across the communities in Northern Ireland. It isn't particularly a unionist issue or a Protestant issue. It's shared by many people. Now, on the canvas trail, I've been struck by the number of people who say it's about reasonable accommodation. Baroness Hale, the Deputy Supreme Court uh, Justice, this made would this say very you're allowed, point. You're allowed to kind of opt out of normal well, equality Absolutely no question of opting out of discrimination laws. Uh, everybody needs to be treated equally. There should be no right to discriminate against anybody. But it's about the reasonable accommodation that if somebody has a particular belief, they shouldn't be forced, for instance, a Muslim should not be forced to say something detrimental to Allah. A Jew shouldn't be forced to say something that is detrimental to their faith. But at the same time, individual Muslims, Jews, Protestants, Catholics or whatever, 
should not, under any circumstances under the law, be allowed to be discriminated against. It's a question of reasonableness, reasonable accommodation. And I think across Northern Ireland, a recent poll by the Belfast Telegraph indicated that the vast bulk of people in Northern Ireland, and indeed I venture to say across the country as a whole, agree with that kind of reasonable accommodation approach. Mm. Mike, is it the case, I, I get the impression there's a quite big gulf between the social conservatism in general in Northern Ireland and what is a much more liberal society, an increasingly liberal society in, in, in Great Britain. I, is that, is I, that I, not I, just my impression? Am I, am I misreading it there? I think, I think you are, because I think, I think the, the younger generation in Northern Ireland particularly is much more progressive right. and liberal, and I think they would agree with me. That some that of the things happened. people in Nigel's party have said have been really quite... You wouldn't get them said, I don't think, in the... Or indeed in other parties. I mean, there are other parties around here and their members have said some quite atrocious things in the past. I don't defend anyone who has said anything uh, uh, which is against anyone's religion. Homosexuality is an abomination, for but, I mean, example. Well, I mean, people say well, get, all sorts of things that, in the heat of campaigns, but let's make it very clear. And I think there is a view round the table. It isn't divided amongst... Now, I think it's wrong to try to say there's unionist and nationalist parties that are set up a false divide. There are people across the communities in Northern Ireland who take a view about certain things being right or wrong, that's a matter for the devotion. That's why we have devolution. Right. That's things, why it's for the Northern Ireland Assembly missing. to decide but, but, these but things. But one of the things that's really missing in our society is common sense. Out, if the message went back to London or to Manchester or wherever, that this isn't a city that celebrates diversity, because yes. it is, and this city is a, a city of many right. cultures. In, and all we in all communities. In all communities. Yes. Yes. And, and this, right. week, this week in East Belfast, when a Lithuanian lady was attacked her business, the great people of East Belfast, a strong unionist area, came out to protest that and to give her their support. So right. let the message go out that this is a great city and a city which values diversity. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes we like, lose sight of common sense. I mean, like, we, we've got yeah. to a situation where we are saying that a cake, which after all, let's remember, is an inanimate object, is gay. This is ridiculous. <laughs> right. Let's move on. And you've, you've made your positions, I think, very clear there. And, and maybe a fuzzy boundary between the different communities, but certainly not a, a very hard one. Look, one of the defining issues in this election is towards the deficit. Uh, and really the speed at which we're going to get it down. Do you have to eradicate it in this parliament, which is going to be very painful, or do you still be borrowing at the end of the parliament, which allows a somewhat easier time over the next few years? Um, Martin. Well, I think the message has to go out again that when, when London austerity comes down the tracks and they say that they're going to force us to inflict pain on, on those who are less well off to reduce the deficit. What we say is, look, we are compassionate people. We believe we should defend the vulnerable. And if there's going to be a pain, it has to be equal pain. Our interest isn't only in uh, bonuses for bankers, it isn't only in the mansion tax. We are interested in defending those at the bottom of the economic ladder. And that's why we're in a standoff with, with uh, the, the, the Tory-led coalition in London, because they have said they want us to impose hardship on children with disabilities, adults with severe disabilities, the long term. And we're saying no, we've fought that for two years, we continue to fight it. To listen to Marcin, you think he was there to vote and argue on any of these issues whenever the Tories are. We are imposing on them. Our five are imposing on them. Some of us take our seats to oppose the Tories in this. Other people don't take the seats simply so they can pose on those issues. In terms of your questions about the deficit and the debt, yes, of course, we need to see the deficit reduced. Yes, of course, we need to see the deficit reduced. Yes, of course, we need to see the deficit reduced. Yes, of course, we need to see the deficit and the debt brought down over time. But we do not want to see our economy brought down. We can't see public services continuing to be brought down. We can't see morale in public services continuing to stay down, being locked in pay restraint at a time when we have a budget where George Osborne is trying to say, oh, we're seeing an end to austerity. People don't see an end to austerity when it comes to public service budgets and when it comes to public sector uh, pay. That's something that has to change. That's why we want to see a Labour government. The best government we can get in the next parliament is a Labour government. The only vote that people can cast in Northern Ireland that guarantees unequivocal support for that and has no truck with a Conservative government is one for the SDLP. I'll, I'll come to the unionists too in a minute. Uh, David. Well, Naomi Long voted against welfare reform as well and certainly there is a need to change the pace of the of welfare welfare cap. Cap. We, we are in the reality of what we have to live with, with, with what exists across the UK. We, we also need to ensure that within Northern Ireland's own budgeting, we don't go for what the executive is currently doing, which is making all the changes by cuts in services. The reality is there are people in reasonably comfortable middle class positions who pay the lowest household taxes in any region of the UK. But I want to, I want to, I just want to push you, David, so we're sorry not, to interrupt, but I want to know how your MPs would vote on national UK austerity. They would vote against it, they would be closer to, say, the Labour plan, which would allow some borrowing, well, or uh, not? 
there, there, were, there is a need to slow down the process of deficit okay. reduction. You'd and there's down. also a need to change the welfare reform programme. Okay, very, very clear. Let's uh, a very quick sentence each from the unionists too, Mike. Well, at the moment, the Treasury is spending more servicing the debt than it spends on public services in both Wales and Northern Ireland. So we can't ignore it. We're leaving £55,000 of debt for every household in the United Kingdom. That has to be tackled. I want us to put a focus off the subvention of block grant here in Northern Ireland and on serious wealth generation, on as UK, I have said. Yeah, so you would vote for something closer to the Conservative plan of eradicating the UK's deficit quite quickly? Well, as soon as you can do it, as let's get rid it. of it. But let's be more efficient in how we spend our money, and that's particularly true of the devolved government right. here at Stormont. In a, a couple of sentences, Nigel. Yeah, well, I mean, the DUP with eight, nine or ten MPs, whatever it will be, will actually be able to perhaps make a difference. And the marching party don't go to Westminster at all, so they're irrelevant in this context. Uh, Mark is already tied to the Labour Party, as we've seen, and others will be too small to make a difference. So we can make a difference in this. And our approach is, yes, the deficit has to be tackled. We need to be responsible. We need to deal with these issues to put our country on a sound footing. But if it takes a bit longer to do that, then so be it, because we've got to do it in a compassionate and fair way. That's why we approach the bedroom tax here in Northern Ireland, and we want to see it scrapped in, in the rest of the UK. Well, you voted, you've, you've yeah. voted for the 30 billion of cuts to be locked in for the next spending period. No, we, you voted, we, you we, voted for we, that. we have not been tied Mexico, to any time scale. It. All the responsible parties at Westminster Park, we don't live in a fantasy in world. The we, want the see, we want to see the United Kingdom voted, succeed. You voted I know to lock you don't in particularly, 30 billion pounds well, of If you allow me to finish, you don't want to see the United Kingdom succeed as a country. I do. I want to see the deficit reduced. I haven't tied myself to any time okay. scale. That was the question. I want to see okay. economic success and growth throughout these islands. But Adam, okay. we should short also pause, say to, short to pause, to... short pause, marching, because we'll talk in a moment tactics in a hung parliament negotiation. Who get whose support in the event of an almighty post-election haggle over who forms a government? But the number of MPs everybody has matters, and each night we reveal the Newsnight Index. It's our forecast of the election results. It's compiled by Dr. Chris Hanratty and his colleagues. For the UK, we're still projecting a close result. The Conservatives are ahead of Labour by three seats. You'll see the others there, amongst them, the parties in Northern Ireland. And uh, the Northern Irish forecast is based on different data from the rest of the UK. We are projecting DUP on eight seats, Sinn Féin on five, SDLP on three, with one seat for the UUP, and I'm afraid, David, none uh, for the Alliance. I hate to say uh, it, that adds up to 17, not 18, though. Evan. I think you've got the wrong number for us. It's not uh, preordained anything. Uh, yeah, but there it is preordained there will be 18, okay. not 17. And there's one independent at the moment. And a quick note, if you take the Tory seats plus the Lib Dems plus the DUP, if you can imagine Lib Dems and DUP in an alliance, uh, well, it gets to 315 seats, which is not far. Uh, from a majority. Um, Marcin, the others have been pointing out you don't take your seats. Yeah. Are there any circumstances you could imagine taking your seats? Well, let me say this first. Um, the great difficulty posed to our local administration is the blitz on the uh, block grant. 1.5 billion removed since 2011 and predicting they'll remove the British will try and remove another billion between now and 2020. Therefore, that would be the key battle when the election dust settles we have to, as an enhanced Sinn Féin team, five great MPs, great ambassadors for their constituencies, we will have an enhanced team going into negotiations with the British government. But of course... But you won't take your seats is, in any circumstances. Because no, no. one, one of your candidates, Michelle Gildenew, uh, I think in uh, one of the papers tonight, said, never say never. Well... Um, You're teasing us. No, no, we believe in moving the centre of political gravity to Ireland. And we, and Do you we, say and never or not? Together. We've only got a minute. We're, we're an abstentionist party, but we're a party which is going to be dynamic <laughs> representatives and ambassadors <laughs> for, for our people. So the negotiation... <laughs> Could you imagine that the DUP might be able to bring a Conservative government in with the DUP, all sorts of concessions? Well, that you'd that, be comfortable with if that? If that was the case, we wouldn't be here at 11 o'clock at night in the debate because right. there's no kingmakers around this table. The okay. kingmakers, the people, will have to make their battle with the Sinn Féin and the other parties after that. I'm certainly think, not going to be a kingmaker hey, if you're not there. You've <laughs> made your position. You're just going to support the Labour Party, or will you possibly... Possibly leave open the, the, the avenue of not no, supporting the No, we the won't be supporting the, the Tories. But uh, Labour know that both in government and in opposition, we have voted against them because of our own position. We have our own principled stand. We take our seats to take a stand, not just to take a whip from the Labour Party. Remember, the results from Northern Ireland that David Cameron wants 
our DUP seats and Sinn Féin seats because he knows he can get the votes from one and he won't have any votes against from the other. That's what he wants. <laughs> Nigel Dodds, who is your preferred party, Labour or Conservative? Because I'm, I'm very unclear about where you are at the moment. Yes, and, uh, well, I mean, because we are not committed to either the Conservatives or the Labour Party, unlike uh, Marcin's party, Sinn Féin, who just are irrelevant in this case because they don't Yeah, well, that's been made clear. Look, one of the your... The SDLP are tied to Labour uh, uh, and, and, and so on. We are very, very clear. We've worked with the Labour Party in the past. We've worked with the Conservative Party. We have voted against the Conservatives in Parliament. Our votes made the difference between intervention in Syria and not intervening in Syria. Our votes can also talk, were important in terms you, of the EU sorry, referendum. Can I read you a quote from Ian Paisley Jr.? We don't want cabinet positions. We don't want to be part of a formal arrangement. Northern Ireland gets just under 13 billion a year from Westminster. There's no reason why that couldn't be increased by X billion. That would be a very attractive deal. Are you really, as a party, as mercenary as that? Quote well, makes out. It, is it really we, just we, a haggling over how much? We have made it very clear. I have written an article in The Guardian setting out our national vision, which is about strengthening the United Kingdom with standing the tide of nationalism, which uh, Mark and, and so on would join on with the uh, Scottish nationalists implied, which poses a real danger to the breakup of the United Kingdom. We have also put forward our view about reducing the deficit in a compassionate way, about dealing with immigration, control, but borders, and an EU referendum. So some let's have be very clear. that the ambiguity is really about just yeah, negotiating but, but Evan, the best Evan, price. You, you out said of a minute parties. ago about, about mercenary. I set out very clearly a range of issues which are national issues. But when it comes to Northern Ireland, of course we are Northern Ireland MPs. We will always fight for the best interests of the people of Northern Ireland. We have proved that in Parliament and at Stormont. And, what are and the we will voters... also fight for the best interests of the Union. So then clearly the we will make the, a the very voters... strong pitch for what the, the best deal for our people, all what, sides of the as a, community. As a unionist, what are the voters of the rest of the UK going to make of a party that says, give us a billion, we don't want all your austerity, but we believe in it for the rest no, of no, you, we, which is Northern, not Northern, a bad Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland, Ireland makes a position. vast contribution to the United Kingdom. For instance, 20% of the reserve forces of the United Kingdom are made up of people from Northern Ireland. We're only 3% of the population. And a whole range of fields, culture, science, economics, sport. Northern Ireland makes a tremendous contribution. We make that contribution in Parliament. We make it in politics. We have moved the peace process forward dramatically. So it doesn't come down to pounds and pence. It but isn't going to we, come down to pounds no, and pence. it isn't going to come down to that. That will be an element, because every party is talking about pounds and pence in the debate that we've just heard recently on national television. When Ed Miliband and David Cameron, they talk about pounds and pence. Yes, these things are important, but they're not the only okay. thing. Our vision for Northern Ireland and for the United Kingdom is Gentlemen, to strengthen both. It, we, we could carry on all night. I'm afraid we are out of time. I have to thank you for the discussion. I hope you found it informative for those who can't vote for any of these parties and useful for those here in Northern Ireland that can. But that is it for this evening. Very good night. Thank you very much.